of mindset do you think you, you have to, you're going to have to have as you enter into this uh, this world record? I think I can. There's a lot of even when I did juggle, there's a lot of like questioning about like is it safe? Are you capable? La la la. And it's just like I love like proving people that you can and like yeah. I can and like one can. Mm-hmm. So I think just I can. And as a as a female, do you think it's important for you know younger females to be out there doing these sort of yeah, races? 100%, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I think this. I mean, it's obviously very important to look after yourself, and that's one thing that I want to talk about more in the build up to this challenge mm-hmm. about sleeping, eating, periods, hormones, and like thinking about all those factors. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, absolutely get out there. But um, yeah, looking after yourself is so important. I had a bit of a down last year, end of the year, I like, did too much yeah. and had a bit of a reality check. So this year, hence, seems like it was central. But um, yeah, yeah, it's overwhelming. But it's what I really love is all the people that follow She Races and all the people that have had their lives changed by something they're doing or their supporters mm-hmm. or they want to tell you their story, they got into running or they saw me breastfeeding and they. They've done that and they've got back as a mum and yeah. And you get to meet those people that I'd never meet normally on a race or anything. So yeah. I'm loving it. Amazing. And you said uh, you said just before, um, it's strange because you you're like, why, why do people recognise me? And then you're like, oh, I am an athlete. <laughs> I, I forget that. It's it's. I think I forget that I actually have a presence outside and that people do recognise what you look like, and it's lovely. And I think that's a great thing because then they can come and talk to you and share their stories and. It's just an honour to someone to come and want to share their story with you. So yeah, I love it, but it is a bit unnerving <laughs> when people know your name and you're like, Ooh. and then they're like, you don't mean know me, and I'm like, but then again, sometimes you think I did meet them sometimes, but then generally I did. Like, yeah. <laughs> so you had an amazing 2023. Obviously, you had an awesome time in Taiwan. Um, what can we expect for 2024? Yeah. Ooh. So I think 24 hour is definitely my sweet spot. It's what I'm best at if I thought about the distance. Maybe I'm probably better at longer distances than that, but the mental side I love. Um, you can't run one every year. I think I did two last year to qualify and then for the Worlds and it was a bit too much. So next year, hopefully I've got the World Championships next year and I'll be, um, hopefully I've got my qualification stands. Um, then, yeah, I'm looking at an FKT this year. Amazing. In end of May. Um, it's really long. It's about 350 miles. Wow. So it's about seeing whether I can get the logistics, get the childcare in place, get the team in place, hopefully find some sponsorship so I can make a film or something about it or share it because yeah. the only reason I'd want to do something is if I can share it and use it to inspire others. And, Kind of talk about kind of getting more women into yeah. doing challenge events or kind of inspiring people to do challenge. So that's and then I hope something in the mountains. Yeah, and then maybe kind of a hundred mile or a, something towards the end of the year. And then next year is the prep year for getting a bit faster, getting that base speed up, um, ready for the twenty four. So it's a fun year. Yeah, I've got, she, I've got the first race. I was she ultra nice. at the end of April. So yeah, super excited. Five hundred women running an ultra together so amazing. it's gonna be amazing i cannot wait and there's apparently prosecco halfway around oh my gosh <laughs> that's one way to hydrate i, like, I, I, I saw it there's fizz halfway around i'm like is it actually for a second it'd be amazing you're doing like a 50k race and you get a glass of prosecco in the middle amazing um, that's one way to speed up to the halfway point but i'm i'm so excited like just how it's changed in the last year for women especially ultra running yeah so it's exciting to be part of a lot of events next year less focus on my own running and more on kind of everyone else and how i can support and um, having some really fun experience it took a long time for the body to um sort of settle down um but everything feels good and i'm actually running without any pain so you know that's been a long time since i've done that yeah um it's weird you get so get you get so used to having little pains and niggles that you kind of forget about it, and then when they're not there anymore, you think, "Oh wow, this running stuff is, is actually really good." It's quite nice, actually. It's quite nice when I'm not in pain. Yeah. So in that ten years, or, or since I, 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 I planned for that, I, I did have a list of things. Yeah. Um, so there was more than just the one thing, um, and they've all been stepping stones. So um, the next thing is um, is going to come up next year. Um, but this year I'm going to do a little one at home, um, just a, a nice little uh, John of Goats to Land's End. Just a nice, easy, <laughs> a nice, easy juggle. 
Yeah, with three peaks thrown in. Wow. <laughs> wow. So are you hoping to go for the FKT for that? Yes. For, yes. for, the, for the women. So I don't think I can beat races. Um, no. <laughs> uh, time. He, he, we are talking. He's, he's shown me what he's, what he's done and how he's in it and all that sort of stuff. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll leave that for Reese and um, I'll, I'll, I'll do the women's version. Amazing. So do you know what the uh, FKT for the women's is at the moment? There isn't one. There isn't one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So when are you hoping to do that? Um, during my summer break. So I'm at uni now. Nice. Um, and I get a summer holiday. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go uh, June. Um, so being a veteran myself I, I thought it was a really good pause and, and, and i went along and did that but then i was expecting it to be all older guys who just picked up yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or whatever and it wasn't such a range they had, they had everybody people. yeah from from people who got like even though their career was flying they then um had things like glaucoma and it just stops the career because they've got to leave okay. the army and how to deal with all of those pressures yeah there was guys who've been on tour and been blown up so they've lost the sight right. that way and yeah just a vast difference in all the different people and then there was then there was some of the the older what how you yeah. would envisage a veteran to be yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they were all at the checkpoints so at every checkpoint i got to chat to them yeah. and that gave you a little bit of motivation to carry on going so do you think there's a special uh you got a glimpse of a different side of a community you know than you would for uh, let's say a typical event do you feel that you kind of get um get a better indication or you know you feel more at home in that kind of community uh you know that it's a different sort of community for ultramarathon events i really do think it's a different different kind of community everybody's in it in this in the same the same instance it's, and for the vast majority of people doing an ultra they're not worried about the time they're worried yeah, about yeah, getting yeah. to the finish and yeah. because of that everyone's in it together it's it's you and them against the distance you're not against the clock you're not racing against each other yeah and a 50 miler you've got every shape and size all on the yeah, yeah, yeah. together all just want to go and conquer 50 miles that's a vast a vast distance for someone to go and take on yeah and everyone's on that start line all with the same nerves all with the, the same questions and, and doubts and, yeah and everything else but they'll all go and do it and it doesn't yeah, there is no elitism. As such. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you can, you can kind of see that. Even sometimes. the elites are from over and you know, clap here yeah, and everything yeah. like that, isn't it? You know, they're all all the same, aren't they? You know, having done the Race to Stones 50k and knowing what that looks like, it means that that's one thing that is more in my control. Yeah. When doing something like a hundred k. Yeah. Some people, I'm like, if you want to do your first 50 or 100 in a foreign country with a company you've never worked, done it before. Yeah. And maybe the people don't speak your language, like, yeah. cool, but that is far too many variables <laughs> for me. I want to control them and like yeah, yeah, have yeah. a plan. Yeah, definitely. So um, are you thinking of going out and wrecking it? Uh, you know, going down, I suppose That's in the UK, you're very more, you're much like, go down there, do yeah, part of it. Actually. Yeah, that'd be a good way to That out. is actually really smart. Yeah. <laughs> because it's a path that's open to the public. It's the Ridgeway. Yeah. So like, maybe I should, actually that's such a good idea. <laughs> I think because I've strength trained a lot I'm, and done like a lot of functional fitness, I'm yeah. quite resilient yeah. in, to injuries and like quite stable mm -hmm. um, person. That's probably the first thing. The second thing would just be like psychologically, from a rugby background, it's a lot of high intensity interval training, which is very, very different. But what it means is I'm used to the feeling of absolute maximum effort. Yeah, that uncomfortable. That really uncomfortable thing. There's, there's nothing like it where, yeah. you're, where you have nowhere near enough oxygen in your body and you've got loads of lactate and loads of hydrogen and like your lungs are burning mm. and you literally like, I've done workouts where I'd stop and just be, unable to breathe and talk for minutes yeah and because i've had that pain running long distances is i'm like it's not as bad <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hurt as much it's like much more low intensity but for a long period of time yeah so it's like uncomfortable yeah but i'm like it's not as painful yeah so therefore mentally i know i've got more to give yeah and um i think the lessons that you can learn from ultra running and stand you in good stead when it comes to day-to-day -day life. So 
if there's anybody thinking about jumping from a 5k to a, a 50 miler, just go and do it because you might find that you learn some skills that can help you in life as well as running. So I was talking about this with somebody the other day and when I started being coached by Jeff Brown in, I, I feel like sometimes my hydration was on point or my nutrition would be on point and slowly over time we've narrowed it down to like okay now we kind of know like to get into the top 10 of a 200 this is what I need to focus on. Yeah. So I think there's still weaknesses like hydration, uh, sleep, nutrition but they're less weak if that makes sense yeah. so you're constantly evolving them. Um, at Moab I used a product called Vespa mm -hmm. which is um, it's basically OFM it encourages you to use fat as an energy source you know I, I'm not one of those people that kind of jump into something immediately and I, I tried Vespa in training and I was like wow this is really interesting I don't feel as hungry when I'm running mm -hmm. and then I used it at Moab and genuinely like I've burnt over 35,000 calories at Moab. Wow. I finished the race and all I had was one pizza after the race and I was full. And yeah. I put a lot of that down to, to Vespa. So that's helping me to improve my um, my nutrition. And then hydration wise, wasn't quite happy with my setup. Like I know what I need to carry. I know what my salts are. I know how much fluid I need. I've done a sweat test. But I wasn't quite happy with my setup on like mm. bottles and bladder. Yeah. So now I'm like, okay, I can tweak that and make it better. Yeah. And I think that's the nice thing about and the same with sleep. Little improvements every time. Like we said in the last last question, you're learning something new every time. And I like to think that each time I'm trying to progress it and just add a little bit more to make it better. Um, so the weaknesses are still there, but I'm doing my best to make them strengths. A nice place to be with the emotions and with the family and with the reflection which is coming and coming it's when i speak to other runners where the deep reflection is because you know i mentioned it on stage my best mate hugh is a runner and is an incredible athlete he doesn't understand what happened my Hartley's emailed me he doesn't understand what happened and when you've got names and people you can trust like that mm. who can't comprehend the sort of run you managed to piece together that shows it was really really special so that, that's important Amazing. I got my splits every hour instead of every mile. So all I need to know is every hour, how far have I gone? And uh, I charged the watch for maybe half an hour at Langdon Beck checkpoint. And I, my watch finished with 54% battery. Wow. And the, the mapping came into its own on the last 27 miles over the Cheviots when I was sleep deprived and there was snow and ice on the ground. And I just I had confidence that it was one less thing to worry about because the trace was so clear on my watch. So that was, a big advantage from the year before.